believe it. I couldn't make it. And he said, you can't believe those people down there. He said, they were very cordial. They were very nice. And the only reason why I said that is because me and Jeff, we attend at home, and we get beat up all the time. <laughs> those guys are angry over there. <laughs> anyway, for those that don't know me, and, and it feels like a home place. I'm, I'm not, all my friends are not all of them, but there's a lot that I met tonight for years and years I haven't saw. Them. Uh, I'm Richard Bucky Henson, and I, I, I think my wife is giving everybody a flyer, so I won't go into that part of it. It's got my family, my education, my experience, and all the jobs that I've held on there. I am a government retiree. I retired in 2001, and since then uh, uh, I've been kind of messing with several different things. I, uh, I had tried to run before, and uh, I got beat. So uh, I hurt my feelings really bad because I thought I had the experience and know-how to, to help to try. And that's all I wanted to do. Uh, even today is the same thing. I think I've got the experience and everything that would help the tribe. Uh, some of the things that I want to do, I know, and, and I want to tell you this. I'm not going to sit up here and lie to you about the things that, that can be done that, that I say I can do. Because there's seven people on the council. And if you can't get four of those guys together, you're not going to do anything. So that's the first thing you got to do. The second thing that I want to go into is we, uh, the Comanche people, are rich. We got money all over the place. Where's it going? All over the place. We got money going all over. We got, if you even notice the budget, if you know anything about the budget, that's nuts. Flat nuts the way they're throwing money away. I went up there the other day to the tribe, and I, I, I hadn't been there for a long time, and I saw six of these great big moors. You know the kind that's got the handles on them? Now, does it take six moors right there to run the tribe right there? That's money that we spent. Along with that, there was a pile of rocks in there that this, my cousin told me, cost them $800 for that pile of rocks to put them around the, the complex. And now they took it all up, put it back in a pile. That's just an example. I'm not saying that's good or bad. That's an example of what's happened to the money of the Comanche tribe. Another thing, and, and I just thought of this, I don't know whether it's good or bad, but we've been raised to be white people. We work out in society, we do all that stuff, and we have a police force now. Does anybody know what our police force does? I don't, but we've got a Comanche police force. I don't know, I don't know how it works, I don't know what kind of job they do, I don't know what responsibilities they do, but we never had that when we were growing up. We had the lock cops of the sheriffs on us. And they had jurisdiction everywhere. So I, I don't know about that. But that's another example of you and me not knowing why should we have them. We got money going out over where I got a horror stories I could tell you about the casinos. We got money, money, money coming out of the casinos, and we don't know where it's at. I talked to all the people that's on the council right now, and they have never seen a budget come out of the casinos. So, what about their budget? If you take a look at our budget, we're supposed to have 20% in administration. And if you look at that figure, that's not anywhere near 20%. Where's the rest of the money? The first thing that's got to be accounted for is that money. You've got to get in. The people that's going to get in there, got to, we got to account for that money. we got to say, okay, casinos, we want to see that budget. We can't by ourselves change it, but we can, as a, as a ruling body of the tribe, we are bound to take care of that business. And that's got to be done. The other thing is we have people that's making money that's the higher the heads of the casinos and stuff. I don't know exactly how much they made, but I, I hear a bunch of horror stories about it. But that's got to be governed. And let me tell you the most important thing. All of you sitting right here as a government body. Them guys are sitting up there are the people that you elect. We are a multi-million dollar business. 
and we need we put people in office up there do they know what they're doing so can you blame them I mean they're trying their best because you uh, maybe you did but the people of the command you try to believe them to those positions I know if I had a multi-million dollar business I'd make sure who I put in there that knew what he was doing because I want that guy to make me a dog and that's what's not happening right now we got money just like Eleanor was saying. We spent four hundred fifty thousand dollars on the bus. Why? We got transportation buses over there that's taking people everywhere for a dollar. But are they loaded all the time? How much money are we losing there? You know, we got to stop and think, and we got to build an economic base. These casinos not going to last forever. There's three hundred sixty-eight of them in the state of Oklahoma right now just the state of Oklahoma. They're all over the place. We have made good money in the last few years there, and this last year I understand that we're not making good money. But there's reasons behind that. We got to step back and we got to say, look, we've got this casino money, let's make it work for us. Let's make it do something. Let's build an economic base here. The Comanches are rich, they got the people that, the right people, they got the right people already that can get in that office, and they can work toward that goal. We got them. We got the smart Comanches too. They're all around us. They're among us now. And if we're looking for people and, and want to see what, whether they're smart or not, where's the best place to go? Don't we have an educational program over there? Don't we have a, a relocation program? Those people went out and they learned a trade and we educated them. And we can take that list out of there and we'll say, oh, these people need to come back. This and we can work. We got a, we got a uh, manpower list right there. They're talking about our people can't work for the tribes, our people can't work for the casinos. There's a reason behind that. The federal government, the Gaming Commission, has a requirement. You can't have a felony, you can't be in jail, you can't smoke dope, you can't do none of that. Well, some of our people do do that. Some of them can't get a replicate, have no other where to go, but there's a good reason behind that. They have nothing to look forward to. to. Why? They got nowhere to go. We have to create, and this is my pet peeve. I was raised on welfare. I didn't have nothing. Johnny, Johnny could tell you. Anyway, we didn't have nothing. My family got any kind of help they could. My mother, she raised us. There's a lot of people that know my mother. She'd give you the shirt off her back. But she raised us. I wanted to go to Fort Seal and she would she said over her dead body. She was not going to put me in no Indian school. So she made me go to a public school. I had other people that influenced my life on where to go and how to do it. I went, I got an education. I have to say the educational part, uh, the, the beginning was my folks. Uh, I don't know how many of y'all know my dad. He's, he's, he's a black man. He's a preacher. He used to just take me under his hand. I was a little white guy. He'd take me all over. Black guy with a little bitty white boy just walking down the railroad tracks to reach his spur. But he had a big influence on my life. And all he ever did was work in the field. He took me out there working with him. Everywhere he went, he'd take me with him. He was a big influence on my life. And then there was Bullhead, I don't know how many knows him. Uh, Bullhead and his wife, Maureen, they were a big influence on my, life, on my life. But the biggest influence that I ever had was my wife. When she came back, we got married, and uh, I started working, working, and decided that I wanted to get a degree. And the reason I wanted to get a degree was I went, I started working for the government and I went to one of the NCIA 